Hi everyone, this is Miss Rose. Today we're gonna to cover the C section of notes over transcription. You should have your fill in notes pulled up and ready to take some notes and follow along with me as you watch this video. All right, so what you're looking at on your screen right here is the central dogma. A dogma is an idea that you hold dear to you. Um, and so this central dogma of protein synthesis states that we have this flow of information. We start with the instructions in DNA and those instructions are made into a molecule of RNA. And then that RNA goes on to help us make proteins. We'll see today that this process of making protein is divided into two steps. The first one is transcription, and the second one is translation. In transcription, we'll go from the DNA to RNA. Remember all of the instructions for what makes you, you, including all of the instructions for making the proteins that help your body um, function are in DNA. So during transcription, we'll be making a message of what the DNA's instructions are in the form of RNA. And then in translation, we'll be translating that RNA message into actual protein and assembling protein molecules. There are two main steps in protein synthesis. The first one is transcription, and the second one is translation. What we're doing in protein synthesis is making proteins. Remember that synthesis means to build or to make. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're building or making protein in this process. We're using the instructions in DNA. Remember DNA is all of the instructions for what makes you, you. That includes all of the instructions for making proteins that go on to be things like enzymes, which will catalyze or speed up reactions in your body. Or other proteins can go on to be muscle fibers or your hair, your skin, your nails, all sorts of things in your body. In the process of transcription, we're going from DNA to RNA and making a, a RNA message out of DNA's instructions. And in the process of translation, we're going from RNA to protein. I mentioned already the central dogma. The central dogma states that we have this flow of information. We start with the directions, which are DNA, and they're held in the nucleus. They cannot leave the nucleus for any reason. And this is to protect the DNA. Remember that we have vesicles, uh, we have all sorts of moving parts in cells. Cells are constantly taking in materials and getting rid of wastes. So there's a lot of hustle and bustle in there and things moving around. Since DNA is all of the blueprint that makes you, you, if that were to get bumped, it could get damaged. So it has to stay inside of the nucleus where it is safe and there's fewer moving parts. So DNA cannot leave it for any reason. It has to stay in the nucleus. However, we have a problem. The thing that makes protein is out in the cytoplasm. Proteins are made by ribosomes, which are either free floating in the cytoplasm, or remember they can also be on the rough ER. But in any case, we have to get the instructions in DNA out to the thing that puts together these proteins in the cytoplasm. So we need a middleman, we need a messenger to relay those directions out to the cytoplasm. And that's where RNA comes in. RNA is our little messenger middleman. It will take DNA's message and relay it out to the ribosomes and give them the instructions on how to make the proteins we need. So RNA is our link between DNA and proteins. It is our middleman. It is our messenger, like I mentioned. And there's actually a shorthand for messenger RNA. It's mRNA. And that's one of the types of RNA we'll be talking about in this section of notes. There's a gene for every protein. So sections of DNA are genes. And 
each of those genes will code for a specific protein. What we'll see is that the messenger RNA will make a copy of one specific gene in the DNA, and it will relay that instruction out to the ribosomes in the cytoplasm so that that ribosome can read that specific instruction for making maybe it's keratin protein, which goes on to be your hair and your nails. Or it could be the instructions for making salivary amylase enzymes which are a type of protein that breaks down carbohydrates in your saliva. Before we jump into the actual steps of protein synthesis and get into transcription and translation, we need to remember what the bases are in DNA and RNA and some of the differences between them. So DNA stands for deoxyribose nucleic acid. Its sugar is deoxyribose and the sugar in RNA is ribose. The bases in DNA are the adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. And the bases in RNA, there's only one, uh, one different one. It still has the base adenine, guanine, and cytosine, but there's a, a new base here and it's called uracil. Remember that DNA is double-stranded looks something like this. And RNA is single-stranded. It's just half of that DNA ladder. And here are our bases at the bottom of your screen. What we'll see is that instead of thymines, RNA will have uracil. So we have the same base pairing rules for RNA. G will pair with C. And A, instead of pairing up with T's, it'll pair up with a U instead. All right, now we also need to talk about types of RNA. I already mentioned that the type of RNA that gives the DNA's message out to the ribosomes is called messenger RNA. It carries the message that will be translated into a protein. It's our middleman. It, tra it uh, transfers the instructions for making a protein out to the actual thing that makes the protein, the ribosomes. And here's a picture of it right here. It is that single-stranded structure. It looks like half of a DNA molecule. Another type of RNA that you're going to be introduced to later on in this unit is called transfer RNA. And for short, we'll write out small t RNA, just like we write out small m RNA for short for, for messenger RNA. Tra uh, transfer RNA or tRNA's job is to bring in amino acids from the cytoplasm to a ribosome. So remember, amino acids are the building blocks of protein. When we first learned about them, we showed them as little circles and they are linked by peptide bonds. And once we have a big chain of amino acids linked together, that chain is going to fold up and make a functional protein, like your um, muscle fibers, like myosin and um, the keratin that I mentioned earlier that makes up your hair and your nails. There are two ways that we can show tRNA. Sometimes in diagrams, the tRNA looks like this, where it has a section of three bases down at the bottom, those A's, U's, G's, or C's, since this is RNA, there are no T's anymore. And then it'll carry that amino acid at the top of that structure. This is a more simplified way of looking at a tRNA. Really, it looks more like this picture over here. This is that single strand of RNA. So really there are bases that are sticking off over here too. What makes this single strand of RNA stick together and have this shape are hydrogen bonds between here that'll hold it together and give it this shape. One way that I remember that this is tRNA and not mRNA, for example, is that this actually kind of looks like the letter T, a lowercase one. 
So it'll carry three of those bases again. Maybe this is an A, maybe this is a G, and maybe this is a U, for instance. And it also carries an amino acid at the top. The third and final type of RNA that you need to know about is called ribosomal RNA, or rRNA for short. And it is what makes up ribosomes. So this single strand of RNA, that half of the ladder, is all wound up in here, making this structure. And when we show ribosomes, we generally just show them in the cell as a little circle. But know that if we were to look way deeper and way closer at them, we would see something that looks like this. All right, so our first step of protein synthesis is transcription. Our second step is translation. And since those words sound a whole lot alike, what keeps me on track and um, keeps me help, helps me to remember that transcription is first is the C in transcription. There's no C in translation, it has an L instead. And C comes before L in the alphabet. So that helps me remember transcriptions first and then translation is the, that second step. What happens in transcription is we are going from DNA to RNA. Transcription is the process of synthesizing or building that mRNA messenger by using one strand of the DNA molecule as a template. So this occurs similar to DNA replication. Our DNA molecule will open up and some of those bases will be exposed in here. And enzymes will do the, the work of actually making this mRNA molecule. They will plug in uh, free-floating nucleotides onto this DNA molecule, matching them up um, the base pair, by the base pair rules, A's to now U's and G's to C's, to create this single-stranded RNA. So making an mRNA molecule is a whole lot like making a copy of DNA. We're going to be matching up the complementary base pairs to what our DNA instructions say. So the DNA molecule will end up opening up, and so this, um, our enzymes that are actually doing the work can read what the DNA base, bases are and what order they're in. And it, the enzyme is going to create a molecule of RNA by pairing up complementary bases. Just remember, there is no thymine in a molecule of mRNA, or any RNA for that matter. Instead of thymine, we'll just replace it with a U for uracil. So wherever there is an A in DNA, when we make our complementary RNA, we'll pair it up with a U. T's will still match up with A's. G's will pair up with C's. And C's will pair up with G's. This diagram shows us how transcription is occurring. We have another enzyme you need to know about. Its name is RNA polymerase. Sounds a whole lot like the DNA polymerase. So it's going to be constructing an RNA molecule and our DNA polymerase made a new copy of our DNA molecules. So it's doing some of the same things. Here we have our molecule of DNA. And remember, this is happening in the nucleus. Our, D our DNA cannot leave the nucleus for any reason. It stays there. So this process of transcription also occurs in the nucleus. Our RNA polymerase enzyme will come in and find the start of a gene. It will open up this DNA helix and the free floating nucleotide bases here will pair up to their complement. A's to use in RNA and G's to C's. T's pairing up with A's in RNA and C's pair up with G's. Once this RNA polymerase reaches the end of the gene, it will break off and our mRNA transcript here, this piece, will be able to leave the nucleus. All right, so my next couple of slides are gonna break down that process into a couple of distinct steps. The first thing that happens in this transcription process is that RNA polymerase will find the beginning of a gene in DNA. So it's gonna start right here in this specific section of DNA. 
The second step of transcription is called elongation. Our RNA polymerase that's here, it started at this start site where the beginning of the gene was, and it is going to be moving along the DNA sequence and pairing up complementary RNA nucleotides with one side of the DNA and binding them together. As it moves along and it's moving to the left in this diagram, the DNA helix will wind back up as that gene is transcribed. Once it reaches the end of the gene, the RNA polymerase will detach from the DNA and the DNA will wind all the way back up and it's like it never happened. Our RNA transcript that's being made is right here and it, after it is completely made from using DNA's instructions as a template, it will be able to leave the nucleus. So let's practice elongation as if we are the RNA polymerase, reading this gene, starting right here and moving this direction. So if our DNA template reads A, T, T, G, C, so on and so on, our RNA polymerase is going to put in those complementary bases and create this red mRNA right here from DNA's instructions. So the RNA base that would pair up with A is U, since there are no T's in RNA. T's would still pair up with A's. G's would pair up with C's. C pairs with G. A pairs with another U, a uracil. G, G, C, A, U, and C. And then when this DNA, when this RNA polymerase reaches the end of the gene, it will detach and our new mRNA transcript can leave the nucleus and find a ribosome. And that ribosome will read these instructions and assemble a protein. That brings us to our third step, which is termination, the end of this process, essentially. That mRNA transcript, like I mentioned a second ago, will leave the nucleus once it's transcribed. Our DNA polymerase detaches and the DNA will wind back up again like nothing ever happened. The next step of this process is translation, and we'll talk about that next. Just know that all of this, remember, happens in the nucleus. Our next step of translation will occur out in the cytoplasm and at ribosomes.